Hi everyone, quick video to continue the discussion around the 6.5 PRC slash 7 PRC, uh, i.e. the 6.5 version necked up to 7 millimeters, which is gaining traction in F-Class at the moment, particularly F-Class Open. Following on from the most recent video I did where I explain why the 6.5 to 7 PRC has come about, in this video I wanted to take you through um, some things to note, some things to be mindful of when resizing the brass after firing. I wanted to go over just some of the measurements and issues that I have found. Um, given this is a relatively new cartridge and the SAMI specs that were originally released on this calibre, the 6.5 PRC, do not accurately match the brass that is being produced. Certainly by Lapua. I have no experience with ADG brass or any other very um, manufacturers that are manufacturing um, PRC brass at the moment but certainly Lapua which um, is typically the the gold standard in the F-class world um, there's some there's some measurements coming through with that brass that doesn't match up with the Sami spec which has resulted in reamers the original sort of reamers that people were experimenting with not quite working and that's also translated to some of the die manufacturers when they manufacture their resizing dies being out of spec in the sense that um, they're basing their designs off the Sami print um, when in reality the, the uh, some of the dies, not all of them, uh, are not resizing the brass down enough at the, at the 200 line um, which is where the issues are appearing. So what I wanted to do today was just, um, I've got a, on the left here, I've got a virgin piece of unfired Lapua brass. All that's been done to it is that it's been uh, necked up to 7 millimeters, and it's been neck turned and I have chamfered inside and outside the case neck. Uh, that is it. Uh, you can see there's no mark around the 200 line as it hasn't been fired or resized as yet piece on the right. This one has been part of my load development batch. You can see the resizing mark here around the 200 line and that's where my resizing die is doing most of its work. This particular case, uh, this one's been fired five to six times you'll note the primer pocket's dirty i don't clean primer pockets haven't found any uh degradation in accuracy from not doing that but um that's a um another story so what i'll do is take a couple of measurements shortly you'll see in front of you as well i've got uh two sets of calipers here in front i've got the classic japanese branded mitotoyos which work very, very well for taking a variety of measurements and fitting various attachments, such as your shoulder bump gauges, as well as attaching things like bullet comparators when you're setting your bullets and measuring your um, base to O drive. The calipers above, the Easy Data mic, that's a, um, a digital micrometer. And upon advice from my gunsmith, and I'll, I'll drop his name in this video, uh, Matt Peroz of LRP Solutions in Sydney. Matt is a very well accomplished F-Class shooter. He's a full-time gunsmith and arguably one of the best gunsmiths without doubt in Australia. And I dare say probably the world based on the... Uh, quality of rifles that um, he produces in the F-Class world. He fits and chambers probably 90%, if not all, of the Australian F-Class open, open 
um, team does all their rifle work. Uh, so that's that's the sort of esteem and regard that he is held in, and um, certainly someone that um, I listen to and look up to and learn a lot from. So when I was taking initial measurements at the 200 line to see what was happening with virgin brass versus fired brass versus resized brass, and apologies today, I do not have any fired brass. Um, all I've got is the virgin brass and resized brass. I was using the Mitutoyo calipers and obviously getting a reading, which I assumed to be accurate upon um, having a chat with Matt and discussing it. And showing him what I was doing, I was uh, quickly corrected that I was not uh, not doing it properly, and I needed a different tool for the job, being the micrometer, which will produce a more accurate measurement when measuring at the um, the, the diameter of a case, particularly around the 200 line, um, as you will see very very shortly. So what I'll do here. Oops. Power on the mid Toyos. Hopefully you can see that okay. We've got that zeroed. So what we'll do here is take the virgin brass unfired and we'll position the calipers roughly where the 200 line is. And you can see here we're getting a reading of 0 0.5280. For all intents and purposes, that looks pretty good. Likewise, with the fired piece of brass that has been resized a number of times, I've got a good line here on the 200 line. 0.5295. So there's a thou and a half difference on that one. Just put those calipers to the side for the moment and I'll demonstrate now the readings that I get using the digital micrometer. We are at zero. Wind this out. Almost where we need to be. Okay. And now we see here we are getting a very different reading to that of the Midu Toyos. It is actually two thou wider in diameter than what the Midu Toyos are telling us. And this is important because this is the figure, this is the measurement which you need to go off when doing this type of comparison. With the resized piece of brass that's been fired multiple times. Point five three two three. This is a consistent reading that I get after resizing with my resizing die. Okay, everyone can see that. So let's talk about the resizing die options out there. At the moment, in my opinion, and I don't mind, I have no issue spending money on F-Class when the situation warrants it, uh, particularly when it comes to, to dies. Uh, in the world of F-Class Open, I will buy the best dies that I can afford generally each and every time. With something new though, like the uh, the 6.5 PRC being necked up to 7 millimetres, there are limited options out there. The three primary ones that I'm aware of is uh, Bullet Central with their Micron Precision Line, Short Action Customs or SAC, they also make one, and the most recent addition to the market I'll show it very shortly, is Eric Cortina's die. Now, I am very, very happy with the Bullet Central die. However, based on my chamber, uh, my chamber is cut at the... It's a 0.535 uh, 
five reamer at the 200 line. With that resized brass that you're seeing here, that's giving me about three to three and a half thou of clearance when I put uh, a loaded round in the chamber to, um, to fire. On extraction, a fired case based on the measurements I've got, it's coming out at 0.5345, which is giving me half to sometimes one thou, depending on the um, depending on the brass. Not a lot of wiggle room, but enough. For the most part, I am avoiding the clicker issue. However, with some of my early load development, I run uh, 2209 powder, uh, which is H4350 for anyone in the US watching this. That would be the fastest powder I would consider running in this particular calibre, in this cartridge. Uh, 2209 or H4350, um, for those in the know, it has a similar burn rate to Reloader 16, but I suspect in terms of pressure, Reloader 16 probably produces just a fraction less pressure than 2209. I'm not running a hot load, but in my early load development when I was uh, seeking powder charges, I pushed up over 53 grains. I went up to 53.2 or 53.4 on a reasonably hot day here in um, in Sydney. It was above um, probably around 30 to 35 degrees Celsius. That 53.2 and 53.4 load was giving me up around the 2,900 feet per second mark, shooting Berger 184 grain hybrids. Not the 180s, the 184s, up around 2,900. Off the back of those powder charges, it was about half a dozen cases, I did experience uh, what I would describe as small clickers. Not moderate or major, just small. You could notice it on extraction. And what I did to get rid of it, um, cheap and crude, but effective, I polished the uh, the back end of the case with on the outside with steel wool after I resized it and kept a close eye on it for the next firing and lo and behold that seemed to work. Having said that, the powder charge had dropped. Uh, the powder charge that I have found is giving me the best data in terms of extreme spread is down around 52.7 grains. I'm only pushing the 184 hybrids at 2840 feet per second, not hot. I could, I could get more speed if I wanted, however this is where I'm getting the best data and also where I'm getting the best accuracy. So that's where it is staying. It's, um, I'm not seeking to, to hammer this case. This case, for all intents and purposes, can take a bit of a beating. It is very strong brass, but again based on my testing so far, I'm, I didn't see great accuracy up around 2,900 feet per second. I was at 53.4 grains, uh, starting to get a, a, a stiff bolt lift, so starting to run into pressure signs, and that's not where I want to be when I am shooting string fire in F-class open. I want to have a good, steady, stable node where I'm not experiencing pressure, which... Um, you know, I don't want any surprises on, on hot days because uh, on some days in Australia over here we shoot when it's 40 degrees plus on the ground and barrel heat, heat soak and everything becomes a real issue and it can catch you out if you are running hot loads. So, the bullet central die, in short, I am happy with it. I would, however... I'd be absolutely over the moon if it sized down an extra thou to around 0.531 um, with the with the readings that I'm getting on the easy data micrometer. So an extra thou would probably make that sizing die perfect. Short action customs, I said earlier, I don't have any experience with it. Eric Cortina has a die out. Now he actually has two. I received one this week. And if you're noticing here, I've got a brand new virgin case stuck. That's how tight it is. Um, 
long story short, Eric was offering two versions of this die at the moment. I wouldn't be surprised in the future if he if he knocks it down to just one die because the majority of people now that are having uh, chambers reamed for this uh, 65-7 PRC are running uh, 0.535 specs at the 200 line to um, avoid the clicker issue. That's um, after Alex Wheeler, a very well-respected gunsmith in the United States, uh, did a little bit of research, trial and error, on, um, on why the clickers were occurring, realised the Sami spec print versus the original uh, reamers that were made were not sort of marrying up properly and the re the resizing dies that were out there were not resizing enough. So Eric, in his bid to cure that, came out with a small base die. This one is much tighter than the bullet central die that I have. Um, as you saw earlier, the virgin brass is coming in at 0 0.530. I don't know what this is. I suspect it might be down around 0.528 or even maybe 527. But uh, this case is stuck fast. I will get my gunsmith. Um, he's got the right tools and things to, to get it out. But in some correspondence with Eric, and he's been very good about it, basically said, throw this thing out, toss it. He will send me a brand new die in probably six to seven weeks time once he's got his next batch made and they've been nitrided like this one and it makes its way to Australia. I expect to see that in about six to seven weeks and that new die that he is now making is specifically for chambers cut with the uh, the 535 measurement at the 200 line. Uh, what the internal dimensions of that one are I'm not exactly sure but um, I suspect it will probably be very similar to the bullet central die, if not maybe a fraction tighter. I suspect Eric, Eric's will at least size down to 0 0.532, if not if not 0 0.531. And I really think that 0 0.531 figure, that extra thou, would make all the difference in um, preventing clickers, people experiencing clickers with this cartridge. So just wanted to demonstrate that. It's a little bit of a learning process. Um, frustrating, yeah, at times, but that's also half the fun when you're learning about a new cartridge. And um, probably best that um, I share my experiences if anyone else is um, thinking about going down this path. At least you're armed with um, hopefully some, some useful knowledge uh, based on my learning so far. And you can plan accordingly. Um, I would even consider if I was to do another custom reamer for, for safety, I'd probably have it cut at 0.536 at the 200 line. Uh, so that way I think with uh, certainly the bullet central die, probably the short action customs, and certainly Eric's die, that way then these dies will certainly size the case enough and you'll never ever experience clickers. So hope you found the video informative and uh, throw any questions uh, in the comments section and um, good shooting.